Now let's go ahead and talk about that, how you can decode query strings. This means that if you have URLs, something like slash hotels, it can be anything, and you have a query string in there, let's say a sort order or sort in descending, and you can have multiple ones. You can say maybe sort order, maybe you have a search term, and you're searching for all the hotels in Houston or something. So this part will become the query string part. The sort is a key. The value that you're providing is descending, D-E-S-E. It can be anything. The key is search, and the value is Houston. Now, obviously, it's up to you what will be the keys that you're going to be using and what will be the values that you will be using. But query string allows you to change the URL, and then the server can extract out the information from the query string. If you go to Amazon.com, if you go to Hotels.com or anywhere, and if you search, you will see the URL getting changed. They are just appending query strings in there so that they can extract it and perform search and give you the updated result. So I'm going to go ahead and start with app.get. And let's say that we're going to Hotels. So just going to say Hotels. Request async. That's fine. Now, how do we get the value out of the query string? So you have multiple ways over here. We can say request.query, and then we can just go ahead and dive into a particular key that we're looking for. So I can go ahead and say sort, or I can go ahead and pull out search. So let's go ahead and pull out sort over here. And we're going to go ahead and put it into a variable. And that is it. Now, what do I have to return over here? Well, it's kind of up to you, whatever you want to return. Probably you will be returning some sort of a array or something, right? So I'm just going to go ahead and say return HTTP status OK. And let's go ahead and print out the sort order so that we know that we are successfully able to grab the query string from the URL. If I go ahead and run the server again, I can type in a URL and I can pass in the sort and the search and grab the value of the sort. So if I go over here, I simply say hotels, okay? Now if I simply say hotels and I run it, I don't really get anything really back. I just get nil back. I mean, it's really, I mean, I just print out nil and I get the okay back, HTTP status okay, 200. So let's go ahead and add query string. So I'm just gonna say sort in ascending order. And here we go. You can see that we are able to extract out the sort over here, meaning the value of sort in the from the query string, and we are able to get that. You can also go ahead and create a strongly typed struct, which can be which we can use the query string to decode into. This means that I can go into my models and I can create a new file, and I can say hotel query. You can call it anything you want. We're going to create a struct. We'll call it hotel query. It will be conforming to content, and it can have sort, which is string, and it can also have the search term, which is also string. Now I can go back to my routes. And I can say that instead of grabbing a particular key, why don't we simply say that you're going to decode the query string, request.query.decode, and we're going to decode it to hotel query.self, meaning hotel query. So this is going to give us the hotel query. All right. And then we can print it out. Or we can return the same query again. I mean, we can just return back the same thing. We're not really searching anything, so we should be able to do that. Make sure that we have to make sure that our hotel query conforms to content. So let's go ahead and make sure it is conforming to content. It is conforming to content. I think we just forgot to import vapor. So let's go ahead and add vapor. Let's go ahead and build it again. Now we have to make sure that we are catching the error, so try, and we can make it throws. 
So what's going to happen is that if you are going to pass something like this in a query string, it is going to search the hotel query struct for the property name sort and search. If it's going to find that, then it's going to decode your query into the hotel query struct. So if you go to the hotel query over here, you can see that I'm naming it exactly like that, sort and search. And I'm passing over here, sort and search exactly like that. So let's go ahead and run the application. I am passing simply sort over here. Now you can see that if I simply pass in sort, I didn't really pass in search, so it's not successfully able to decode. If you only want to pass in one of them in a query string, then this means that you have to go and make those uh, these things like search or sort or both optionals. So you can you know pass it if you want to or if or else you don't. So now if I go over here and add another one, search, and I pass in Houston, now it's going to work correctly because the sort and search when we try to decode it to a hotel query, then it's able to find both the properties and it's able to decode successfully. If, however, you are only passing in sort and search is kind of like optional, then make sure that you make it optional by putting a string. So now I can go ahead and run this again. And after making these changes, I'll be able to go back and run this. This works, but what if I remove the search part? You can see that it still works. And since the search is now optional, so it only returns me the hotel query struct with one property propagated. All right. So that is how you are going to be extracting out query strings in Vapor. This video is brought to you by my latest course, Mastering Full Stack iOS Development Using Sif UI in Vapor. This is a 12 hour course, which takes you on a journey of creating a full stack application. This means that you are not only going to learn the Sif UI, which is the client side, but you're also going to be learning about the server side. You will create your own server using Vapor and you will integrate it with Postgres database. You will also learn about MongoDB protecting route authentication using JWT deployment middleware, so much more, so much more. This is a complete course. If you wanted to learn full stack development, then this is the only course you need. 12 hour course, already have 200 plus students registered. If you want to register for this course, then check out the YouTube description. There's a link and click on that link. Use that link to register and enroll in this course. Thank you so much. Let's get back to the video. Now, one of the very interesting things about Vapor is that you can actually group your different routes. So right now you can see that inside my routes function, I don't really have anything going on. But if I want to group my routes, let's say that if I want to create a route called movies, and then I want to group it again, I want to call it movie slash, and then I can pass in a movie ID, and then I can do something else. And then I have to create a route called users. And then again, users, and then I want to get all the premium users. So users slash premium. So you can see that these routes are a little bit different because the top two, these ones are for the movies and this is for the users. So how do I create that? How can I create this kind of a grouping? In order to create a group, we will use app.grouped and you can pass in the name of the group that you want to create. So I'm just gonna go ahead and call it movies. This means that any different route or any route that I'm gonna to add to the movies will automatically begin with movies. This means that I can go ahead and say movies.get. And since I'm not providing any route, this means that this particular route that I'm creating will be accessible at movies. I can go and say request, async, and whatever I want to return. So right now I just want to return movies so i'm just going to say movies and that's it that's our first route it's simply called movies let's go ahead and run it and see how it works so i'm going to switch over to the browser and i'm going to type in the route well let's go ahead and type in the 
route over here because I want to select all of that stuff. There we go. And it's on movies. Make sure that our server is running. Let's go ahead and run the server. Always a good idea to run your server before you're trying to access the server. And now if I go ahead and refresh, I can go and see the movies. Great. Now, if I wanted to create a route where you can pass in a route parameter, just like a movie ID, then kind of like this, movie slash, and then whatever number that you want to pass in, some sort of a movie ID, I can do that. I can say movies. So it's already assumed that it's the route is going to begin with movies dot get. And then over here, we can pass in the movie ID. So the route parameter, we are going to get the request async throws, we're going to go ahead and return a string. And now I need to extract out the movie ID. So you can use many different techniques of extracting out the movie ID. I can simply use request.parameters.get. And the parameter that I want to get out is the movie ID, which is the same parameter that I have declared. We can use a get or this one. And if there's a problem getting the movie ID, then at that point, there's not really much we can do. We can simply say bad request. So maybe you messed up something. Maybe you didn't really pass in something uh, correctly. So it's going to error out, okay, if there's a problem. And if there's not a problem, then, well, we'll just return you the movie ID so that we know that we have returned you something. Let's go ahead and check out that particular route. If I go ahead and run it, now we should be able to pass in a movie ID. So if I go to the route, I can go to the movies route. That still works, but I can pass in the movie ID also. Okay. The same techniques can be assigned or used if you want to create uh, something for the users. So maybe I want to create a route for users. And as I was actually mentioning earlier, like if I copy paste it over here, users and users premium, then this means that I can create a group, app.grouped, and I can just call it users. This means that any route that I'm gonna to add to the users would automatically begin with users, and now I can attach different things to it. So let's go ahead and add a route for premium users. Well, it should be users, dot get and I already know that's going to begin with users so it will be simply user slash premium. I can go to request async it's going to return a string and now I can return whatever I want so I'm just going to return a premium. So this particular route will be accessible at user slash premium. So now if I go ahead and run this I will be able to access the users premium route by simply going to users slash premium. So I'll copy this users slash premium. There we go. So route groups or grouping the routes is very, very important for applications that you're building that are much larger applications and that they have like those nested routes like movies and users and TV shows and customers and accounts all of those things. So it's always a good idea to uh, group them up into a way that is easily understood. So this is how you will do grouping in routes and vapor.